Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church out here in Montgomery, Texas. And as a church, we are going through the entire book of Revelation as an online YouTube Bible study. Every single one of these videos is only about 10 minutes or so, and we're just making our way through this book. You know, Revelation is often a book that people avoid, they're scared of, or they just feel like they don't know how to read it. And so we wanted to take away all those fears and kind of break it down into small, easy to digest sections. And so here we are in the middle of Revelation chapter 19. If you haven't been with us, of course, you're more than welcome to go back and start at the beginning or just break open your Bible right now. And uh, we're going to pick it up at verse six. The title or the heading in your Bible might say the marriage supper of the lamb. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder crying out, Hallelujah, for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. Uh, I mentioned last time that in the 20 or so years that I've been a pastor, I've had the privilege to perform about 150 weddings. And you know, every wedding's different. But some of these venues now that exist you know, because in the day, back in the day, people you would either get married outside, <laughs> right? You, you get married in somebody's backyard or you got married on the beach or at a church. Now people get married in wedding venues. They're facilities that are built just for the occasion. And so a lot of these uh, venue designers will create um, places, areas, rooms that are tailored to the wedding experience. And one of those is the groom's room and the bride's room. Now, depending on the venue you get, some of these bride's rooms and groom's rooms can be really elaborate. And I've had the pleasure of seeing a couple of them. Most of the time, the groom's room is pretty bleak. <laughs> it's, not, it's not very big, it's small. And uh, there's probably an attached bathroom, right? But the rest of it, is a big screen TV that has cable, and there's usually a PlayStation or an Xbox set up in there. There's an upright video game. Uh, there's a poker table in the middle of the room. There might even be like a fridge with drinks, right? And that's, and that's the, the men's room. Now, if you go to the bride's room, it's a completely different picture. There's no games in the bride's room. There's, there's no fun going on in there. <laughs> it's all serious. Most of it is mirrors and uh, tables and chairs for makeup, right? Getting your hair ready. Lots of outlets, lots of hangers and hooks. The bride's room is about beauty. The bride's room is about getting ready for the marriage. The groom's room is not about getting ready. It's about having fun. It's about hanging out with friends and partying. The bride's room is about getting ready to walk down the aisle. It's about preparing yourself. And really, this middle chapter uh, right here in Revelation 19, that's what this is all about. You know, it says in verse 8, It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. Right before that, it says that the lamb has come and the bride has made herself ready. So that's us. Right in, in this picture of Jesus returning, the bride of Christ is us, the church. So we are supposed to be the bride. We're supposed to be in the bride's room, making ourselves ready. Not in the groom's room, having fun and hanging out, being goofy and silly, right? We're supposed to be in the bride's room. We are preparing ourselves for a future event. We're getting ready. We're supposed to be excited Filled with, but, filled with butterflies, anticipation, you know, helping the other people get ready and, and feeling that same buzz, that same electricity, that same excitement. You know, um, 
getting that excitement, getting in that mood where you're looking forward to this event, that can be tough. I understand. We, we kind of want to be in the groom's room. <laughs> we want to play games. We want to have fun. We, we want to enjoy ourselves. But the Christian life is about getting ready for Jesus' return. And so to get that excitement, right, to get that anticipation to build, how do you, how do, you do that? I'll give you uh, an example from being married, okay? Um, obviously, I am a groom and my wife is a bride. And sometimes in our marriage, my wife will go on vacation uh, by herself. <laughs> They're not, it's not really a vacation, it's a trip. She'll go on a trip, okay? And she'll go see a friend who lives in a different state. And usually that's what it is. She'll fly to California to meet some friends or she'll fly to New, York, to New York to meet some friends. And so when she goes, maybe she'll be gone a week at a time, okay? Uh, and she'll say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be gone. And those first few days, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I'm probably in the groom's room hanging out, having fun, right? The boys and I, we're eating pizza, we're watching movies, we're staying up late, we're enjoying ourselves. But those last few days, as I start to miss her more and more, I start to look forward to when she will return. I start to get excited about seeing her again. I look forward to going to the airport to pick her up, to seeing her face coming down that escalator and saying, there she is. And, and, I, and I would assume she feels the same way. That the first few days while she's away, she's enjoying hanging out with her friends. But the more she is gone, the more she looks forward to being home again and seeing her children and seeing me. That excitement comes from closeness. That excitement comes from intimacy. The intimacy that is there by creating a relationship. And I would say the same is going to be the same with, with your relationship with Jesus. You're looking forward to the day Christ returns because you love him. You're looking forward to the day when you see that groom because you, you can't wait to spend the rest of your life with him. And for as much as we love earth and for as much as we want to goof off and hang out in the groom's room, we need to be passionate about seeing Jesus and we need to be in the bridal suite getting ready this says that the things that you are clothed with these fine linens they are righteous deeds that's what it says in verse 8 righteous deeds that's how we clothe ourselves that's how we get ready doing the things that we know we're supposed to be doing as Christians not putting it off not saying, oh, you know, one day down the road, I'm going to enjoy myself a little longer here in the groom's room. No. We should be preparing ourselves and getting ready. And I think that excitement, that maybe, if you're missing that excitement, I think it happens by developing the relationship. Spend some more time in prayer this week. Spend some more time reading the scriptures. Go for a walk with Jesus. Talk to him grow closer. We should be excited. We should be looking forward to this event. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.